back here in Nashville for SEC Media Days. And joining me now from on three is J.D. Pakel. And, J.D., I know you talk nationally about college football, but looking at what the Gamecocks did as we taped this here on Thursday, last day, you see everyone packing up. What was just your overall impressions? I think overall just the product that Media Days is is incredible. Like coming to this thing, you're not really sure 100% what to expect and, and who's going to say what. But as a whole, it was refreshing that it was just primarily about ball. Like there wasn't these big storylines about conference expansion or anything with the portal. Like we talked about it, of course, but for the most part it was like, okay, we're this far away from week one. How are we feeling? What are we looking at? And I was really impressed by a lot of the guys. Spencer Rattler was just so poised and mature at the mic. You could tell that he was comfortable speaking on camera, and he'd, uh, he'd been through a few of those interviews before. Is there anything in particular that Rattler said that stood out to you? You know, I think the interesting thing to me was he didn't shy away from any of the Oklahoma questions. You kind of thought maybe he'd get asked about Oklahoma, and he'd say, you know what? I just want to talk about South Carolina, but he was very open. He's like, listen, that taught me a lot about going through adversity. I got to be under Jalen Hurts and be able to learn from him, you know. And so I think all that he was able to acknowledge about his time in Oklahoma showed a lot of maturity and a lot of poise. And uh, if I'm a Gamecock fan, that's encouraging for me to see my quarterback that way. And I know you follow as much as you can with the Gamecock, just like you do yeah. follow all the other teams. Yeah. I just want your overall thoughts, though, on what you saw from a character standpoint. And what I mean by that is obviously – Heading into South Carolina a year ago, there was a lot of discussion, right? Go back to this Netflix thing, and there was a lot from a national standpoint. Yeah. On the outside, covering this team, a lot of people from a local standpoint, they know what this guy's all about. They know his character. You talk to the players, and they say he's one of the best teammates. Again, just a small sample size, but to be able to see him up close. Yeah, and I think the tough part for him, like you mentioned, like kid grew up in the spotlight. Like he has a high school, you know, crew following him around when he's, he's on Netflix. Like, that's just a lot of pressure for any teenager. So I'm glad I didn't have that as a teenager, a senior in high school. Otherwise, maybe I have a similar narrative. But, no, I mean, I think just that the spotlight he's had throughout his career from high school all the way to where he's at now in South Carolina, um, the development and the maturity. I mean, to be real, I mean, we could have seen Spencer Rattler kind of go off the rails after he left Oklahoma. He could have just said, forget about this. I'm going to go and, and do me and do my thing and be all about me. But I think we've seen so much growth and development, not just from a, a football field perspective, but from what it seems like the outside looking in, uh, a character perspective as well. So um, I'm excited for him. If I'm a Gamecock fan, that makes me excited that that guy's going to be a leader for our football team. And I was really impressed with his boys and the way he answered a lot of those tough questions today about Oklahoma. Shane Beamer. What was just your thoughts on his demeanor, year three, speaking at SEC Media Days? He understands what this is all about. Sure, and he's one of those guys that, you know, nobody's trying to make headlines at this thing. Like That's, that's kind of, I guess, like the, the approach if you're a head coach. You're trying not to be in the news and be, oh, so-and-so said this at Media Days. But, I mean, Shane Beamer, when you listen to him, you just you can't help but like him. You know, like there were other people covering other beats that are tweeting out like, man, I'd play for Shane Beamer. You know, like, like he's just you keep he's saying, so likable. You say that a good yeah. bit. I know you've had an opportunity yeah. to interview him. What is just your overall thoughts? Because I know you played ball. You go through it. You understand the used car salesman pitch when it comes to recruiting sure. and all that kind of stuff. We can pick that up. Being able to talk to him, that authenticity. I mean, you feel that. Is there anything else that stands out to you? No, Mike. I think, I think you said it perfectly. He's authentic. And I think – the, the next step in that that I think players are able to pick up on is when you're authentic and you're real, I mean, people are able to get a sense about if you care about them or not. And, I mean, you know from playing ball yourself at the collegiate level, like, there's a lot of coaches that don't care about their players and don't have any interest in, you know, developing them as people or players. And so uh, to see Shane Beamer and the way that he interacts and talks about his players and, and goes not just, you know, what they do on the football field but how they are as people, I mean, I think that is just so – refreshing and gives, I think, a lot of college football fans hope for, for the future generation of coaches. Without a doubt. I won't put you on the spot as far as number-wise, like how many <laughs> wins and this and that. Sure. But just what is your – what do you envision South Carolina being able to do this season? Are yeah. they a team that's able to take that next step? And, again, you know, it's real easy to use wins to measure that. But when I mean take that next step, continue to be consistent – Right, the offense improves year one under Dal Loggins, and you see those younger players make that step. Obviously, you're thinking about two years ahead, but you know, don't expect having Rattler back after this season. Yeah. Juice Wells, there's going to be a lot of talent that they're going to be losing. Yeah, I mean, to, in terms of numbers, like I think over six and a half is a bet that a lot of people should be jumping off in terms of a win total perspective. Like, 
that to me feels like money that's just out there to be taken. So, I mean, take that to the bank and do what you want. Get some early Christmas presents. Uh, is there a casino over here, you know, sportsbook I, in Nashville. I mean, there's nothing in South Carolina yet. Yeah, I couldn't. I'd be the wrong person to ask, okay. but but maybe that would be something to look into after we get off the air here. Uh, but I mean, when it comes to like you said, future guys, I was in, uh, interested that uh, Spencer Rattler brought up Nicholas Harbor multiple times, like with Andy Staples right here when he was in the individual breakout sessions. Like for Nicholas Harbor being as high profile as he was, and to already be someone that the starting quarterback is bringing up. Like, Spencer Rattler doesn't have to bring up Nicholas Harbor. I mean, he, he wouldn't bring him up if he wasn't the guy that he saw some potential in or could be a guy that contributes this coming season. So I think for him to, to be a talking point at the SEC media days uh, should be exciting for Gamecock fans because the potential is there athletically. For Last sure. thing I want to ask you, because I know you were a former running back, sure. right? So. There's been so much made about South Carolina's running back room or lack thereof, and the, and the phrase I always use is lack of lack of proven depth. Sure. That's what I like to call over Gamecock Central. To me, the offensive line is the bigger issue, okay, heading into the season, that rapport, some talented guys coming in. Regardless of all that, what do you do when you're in that running back room and, you know, you have a guy like Juju McDowell, he's got experience. You have a guy like Joyner, who's moving on over from receiver. He's played freaking every position. I mean, yeah. probably even sold popcorn at halftime yeah. for one <laughs> year. I don't plays, know. Yeah. Uh, Mario Anderson coming over as well for a transfer from D2. I bring that up because what do you look for just in terms of having a successful running back room? Like, you know, like, it's so easy to be like, all right, this guy has to rush for 1,000. This sure. guy has to do. But based on where they are, how can you measure success where USC right now has, you know, a lot of questions at running back? Yeah, like you said, I think the ability is is there. There's maybe the, the proven production you're looking for outside of a guy like Eugene McDowell. They've probably been able to see the most if you're a college football fan. But, I mean, I think you said it perfectly. Like, the running back room is what it is, and I think you got some pieces that can get it done. But you look at the offensive line, like, they, they just got to be better up front. And that's not, like, novel analysis or anything that anyone's, you know, putting down on a – on a you know film sheet and saying got to be better. Okay, good. I, I, I can look at that. Uh, I think if, if I'm watching one thing early in the season for South Carolina in that running back room, I'm looking for okay. Let's let's get north and south because when you have questions on the offensive line, those blocks they may not be held for a whole second and a half. It might be hey we got a quarter of a second. Make your decision. You know if you're decisive more often than not, you have a better chance to be right. So I think that's the thing I would watch early on, especially in that week one game against North Carolina. I'll let people know where they can listen to your podcast because it's been taken off, man. I appreciate that, man. I mean any way you want it. We can get it to you. I mean, if you like podcasts on Apple, on Spotify, the hard count with JD Pacquel, anywhere on the on three YouTube channel. But make sure you're a subscriber here to Gamecock Central, man. Get a membership, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you won't be sorry. It's, things are picking up, and I'll tell you right now, talking season. That's what we keep saying, yeah. right? Is content season, content <laughs> season, because heading into next week, birdies with Beamer. We'll have everything. I mean, shoot, we'll get more information. We'll have the coaches talking, so we'll have plenty more information on the way as college football season 2023 is right around the corner. J.D., appreciate you hopping on, bud. Appreciate you, man.